from downtown Spokane. This is 4 News Now, Special Edition. In the last few weeks, the community has come together to support victims of the Oregon Road and Gray fires in their time of need. The two fires burned thousands of acres, hundreds of homes, and leaving many extremely vulnerable. Many organizations have been taking in donations of all kinds, but the need from each fire victim varies drastically. Good evening. Thanks for joining us here tonight. I'm Jordan Smith on this special edition of 4 News Now. Spokane's Our Place Community Outreach has dedicated its efforts to making sure that they have any items fire victims might need whenever they're ready for it. Our Place Community Outreach aims to help people with a need year round. In recent weeks, the nonprofit has focused its efforts on helping victims of the Oregon Road and Gray fires by understanding what it is they truly need. Our Place Executive Director Tracy Swanson was on Maui when the wildfires began in Lahaina. She remembers wishing she could bring her Spokane nonprofit there. Little did she know a week later she'd be using Our Place to help local fire victims. And it just became apparent to me that we, this is what we do and we do it well and let's do it here. She immediately began collecting donations and the response was so great they needed more space. Luckily, a local business has stepped up loaning a trailer to store and sort donations. Now Swanson says her goal is to make sure our place has whatever items fire victims need whenever they're ready for it. Each person has a different journey that they've experienced and there are different steps in their journey. Um, to being whole again. Our place will continue storing donations for fire victims, ready for distribution whenever the time comes. Down the road, when you do have a need for this additional bedding or pots and pans, when you're not staying with your mother-in-law, you know, and you need those items on your own, we're here for you. Swanson says the greatest need from the public now is volunteers to sort and distribute the outpour of donations. Another need is gift cards, specifically for gas. With current gas prices, traveling to and from Spokane for resources is pricey. Spokane is a distance, you know, and we are here for them, and we understand that that is something that they need. Reporting in Spokane, Allison Martinez, 4 News Now. Some great information there, Allison. Thanks for that. Our weather team is declaring tomorrow to be a Four News Now weather alert day. Gusty winds will raise the fire danger across the inland northwest. Let's send it over to meteorologist Matt Gray, who has everything you need to know. Matt? And we had such a nice reprieve from these conditions over the past month or so, and unfortunately, we have to get through tomorrow before we start to see more fall-like weather. So, fire weather, dry weather, and more importantly, as we head into tomorrow, what changes from today is the wind that will begin to pick up around the areas, specifically in the Columbia Basin and Spokane on Sunday afternoon, the least humid uh, part of the day. As you can see here, we have seen a pretty warm and dry temperatures today, and so already that has created a lot of fire hotspots you see in the orange. A lot of the wildfires high up in the mountains have been very active today. You also see those clouds, and that is our incoming weather system that is going to bring us some of those uh, gusty winds, which I will show you here now. So here they are. We're talking about conditions that will be peaking with gusts around 30 miles an hour in the afternoon. My main message to all of you, be careful as we head into that least humid and windiest portion of the day. I'll have more on that part of the forecast and take a look at what's happening for the rest of the week coming up. All right, Matt, thanks so much for that. And it may not feel like it right now, but soon it will be time to break out those winter coats once again. And here at 4 News Now, we want to make sure that every child in our community stays warm. It's almost time for our annual Coats for Kids drive and collection starts tomorrow. You can donate a new or gently used coat at the Spokane County Interstate Fairgrounds and you'll get free admission for one kid 13 years old or under. For hours, a part of a highway 395 north of Spokane was closed due to a crash that seriously injured one woman. That crash happened here on your screen there near West Fender Road. According to Washington State Patrol, an 85-year-old woman was driving north on Highway 395 when she tried to merge to the right. WSP says that she went onto the shoulder, overcorrected, and then lost control, rolling over multiple times. WSP says the cause of that crash was excessive speed. Today, the Spokane AIDS Network hosted their annual AIDS Walk. A group of supporters walked through downtown Spokane to bring awareness to those at risk of or affected by AIDS. 
So a big part of the AIDS Walk every year is bringing awareness and trying to destigmatize our community members living with HIV and making sure that they and their family members and our friends and families all feel supported. The nonprofit hosts weekly events to connect people living with HIV to the resources that they need. Today, the Cougs took on Northern Colorado in the second home game of the season. This game, ex especially exciting for fans after last week's electric win against Wisconsin. Coug tailgaters tell us that they're excited for this season, but are nervous for what next year will hold because of the conference realignment. Jan Lotz and her family of Cougs have been coming to Pullman to support WSU football for 50 years. They're nervous to see how changes to the conference will disrupt their tradition. I love college football and I love the camaraderie and the community that, that WSU brings and so I would hate to see all that go away. Still though, fans are hopeful for an exciting season ahead and they've gotten it so far as yet another Cougs game kicks off in the Palouse next week. Thursday night's high school football game between North Central and Pullman was suspended in the fourth quarter of the game and that suspension was because of discriminatory language that was used from the Pullman players towards the North Central players. Spokane Public Schools says the Washington Interscholastic Activities Association and officials are looking into the incident. Disciplinary action could be taken once the investigation is complete. Poland was leading the game 35 to seven at the time of the suspension. It's too soon to know whether that score will be upheld or the game will be forfeited altogether. Still to come on this special edition of 4 News Now, more information coming out about the floods in Libya that killed thousands of people. The latest on the negligence as rescue teams search for those who are still missing. And one Spokane Elementary is going solar, the first in the district. Why Linwood Elementary was chosen and how these panels help students learn about the environment. And it was pretty darn warm by September standards. You could say even hot with some 90s, including a record high tied today in Lewiston. Everything has really dried out, and now we have windy weather coming in for tomorrow and higher fire danger. So we've got a lot more to talk about what you should expect as we go through tomorrow, plus some much cooler weather that will be on the way soon. Four News Now on your time with Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Four News Now is brought to you by Progressions Credit Union. At 4 News Now, we believe you should expect more from local news. Our team is committed to a community conversation and bringing you information you need when and where you need it. Numerica believes in and supports that mission. What I want people to know about Numerica's involvement is that it's genuine. I work at a company that supports the community because we're a part of it. It's important to give back to the community you live in. We are truly here to help um, and we're passionate about it. Life's better when you're under our roof. Guess that's what American Family Insurance is for. He's the wise twin. Save up to 23% when you bundle your home and auto insurance today. Watch me. Watch my first step turn to leaps and bounds. Watch me play carefree while the world goes round. Listen to me join in with every girl and boy. Screams of happiness, limitless joy. Watch me run through the grass and sand. They said I would, now I can. Watch me. Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere. Let's kick off season lucky number seven in a big way. Yeah! Yeah! What you do? Let's talk dirty. When you got number two. You do do. Excuse me. <laughs> Sex always ends this way. Let me guess, these are things that end with crying? <laughs> Michael Strahan hosts The $100,000 Pyramid. Returns with new episodes September 27th on ABC and stream on Hulu. Dear 2030, we look forward to seeing you. After our 160-point quality assurance inspection, we'll be Toyota certified used vehicles with 7-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranties. Not to honk our own horns, but the best new cars make the best used cars. Yours, Toyota. Get 5.49% APR for up to 60 months on your favorite Toyota certified used models. Find yours at toyotacertified.com. Toyota, let's go places. Life's better when you're under our roof. Guess that's what American Family Insurance is for. 
He's the wise twin. Save up to 23% when you bundle your home and auto insurance today. Around the world here tonight, we're learning more about a powerful and deadly storm that struck Libya nearly a week ago. More than 11,000 have been killed and thousands still missing amid the catastrophic flooding after two dams failed. An investigation now underway to determine possible negligence in the maintenance of those dams. Here's ABC's Ian Panel with Libya, from Libya, with the details. A powerful storm unleashed a torrent of water Sunday night, sending floodwaters roaring down a dry riverbed that cuts through the Libyan city of Derna and into the sea. Surveillance video shows what happened next when two dams protecting the city burst, unleashing a torrent of water sweeping away vehicles, homes and lives. A devastating 23-foot high wave, more than four stories high, tore through Derna. The World Health Organization calls it a disaster of epic proportions. This man says the height of the waves reached the fourth floor, sweeping people from the tops of buildings. The Libyan Prime Minister now admitting there was failure to maintain the dams which were built more than 40 years ago. Prosecutors now say studies decades ago also showed cracks in the dams that could lead to their collapse. They're now investigating possible negligence to identify who was responsible for the lack of maintenance. Officials say at least 11,000 people were killed and thousands more men, women and children are still unaccounted for. The, the human loss is, is huge and it's, it's a very strong hit for the city of Ghana and for Libya. Search teams have been clawing away at the mud and debris looking for victims. Abdul Salam lost his brother and his family. He wants the government to do more to help recover their bodies from under the rubble. What's now becoming clear in a country still in a deep state of shock is that this wasn't just a natural disaster, that perhaps it was also a man-made one. But for now, as the questions start to grow, people in Derna just down the road are simply focused on trying to find their loved ones. Ian Panel, ABC News, in Benghazi, Libya. We can't get this wrong even one time. So uh, we will treat every threat uh, like it's legitimate until we can determine that it's not. Closer to home here tonight, police are investigating fake threats on Friday that warned that groups would open fire and, quote, start a disaster at schools on the north side of Spokane. The message shared primarily through Snapchat, prompting many to call 911 and crime check here in Spokane. Police discovered that this threat was shared all across the country and quickly worked to determine that it was not credible, but it's a part of a growing and problematic trend. Several Spokane County school districts reported these threats on Friday. SPS says that all threats are taken seriously and they make an immense effort to reach out to parents and release the most up-to-date information as they learn it. But because of the prevalence of mass shootings here in the US, each threat, whether it's swatting calls or social media threats, are treated like they're real. Steve Byrne with the FBI says that these threats are draining on police and traumatizing for the people that those threats are directed towards. It could cause quite trauma, you know, quite the trauma for the for the people at the school that all of a sudden is in, under lockdown after seeing some very well publicized events of real life mass shootings. I'm sure people are on edge all around the country and, you know, it, no one wants to be that next school. Spokane police were quick to discredit that threat again. Extra resources were also present around certain campuses as a precaution. Local law enforcement often trains to make sure that schools are set up with extra precautions so that they can be prepared for active threats. And we now transition to your weather where for the past few weeks things have felt a lot more like fall. And this weekend, things are really starting to feel like summer. And tomorrow we go for the first time in a few weeks back into this uh, mode where we have hot weather, we've got dry conditions, and we've got windy weather as well. An update from yesterday, there was a fire weather watch that covered most of the area. That has since been narrowed down to this fire weather warning that goes through the Spokane area, south into the Blue Mountains, and then all the way across uh, the Columbia Basin to the foot of the Cascades. Now, that said, even if you are watching from outside of this area, it is still going to be warm and quite windy as we head into tomorrow. And in fact, you can see where places like Coeur d'Alene, like St. Mary's, like the Idaho side of the Palouse, even as far north as Sandpoint, we're still going to have really low humidities and gusty winds as this first 
cold front, which we'll talk a little bit more, more later in this program, uh, pushes across and brings us those gusty winds and eventually some cooler air. The other big issue here is timing. Timing is everything, right? And unfortunately, this is not good timing as this front pushes through. During the afternoon, we see our wind or our humidity rather coincide with the winds. Very, very low, very midsummer like well below 15%. So all these combining to create conditions where wildfires could spread fairly quickly and existing fires will become quite active. So you can see how the winds here as we head past 11 o'clock, close to lunchtime tomorrow, start to pick up. Sustained winds are going to be around 10 to 20 miles an hour for most areas. But once again, those wind gusts, they will be well over 20 miles an hour as we go through the afternoon. You can see here things peaking at around 15 miles an hour in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene Sunday afternoon, right around 5 o'clock, 4 or 5 o'clock. But as we head towards 8 o'clock and the sun goes down, shorter length of day now at this point in the year, and our winds will calm down quite considerably as a result. We'll also see another windy day on Monday, but it's going to be cooler and more humid, so our fire risk is far, far less on Monday than what we are going to see tomorrow, even with similar or perhaps even faster wind speeds on Monday. Another thing we're going to be watching for is air quality. We've seen the air quality dip a little bit in the Silver Valley. There is a new fire in Shoshone County right near the Montana border. We'll talk about that too later on in this program. But as we watch our temperatures go up to right around 80 degrees, certainly going to be a lot less warm than it was yesterday. And take a look at this cloudy skies as well. So definitely a different feeling day than what we saw today around the inland northwest. Speaking of different feelings, how about mid 60s and a good chance of rain? That's coming for Wednesday. It's Feels like summer now. It is going to feel like fall, and we really have a lot of beautiful fall, early fall days coming up in our forecast. All right, Matt, thanks so much for that. It's been an ongoing issue for some families whose students go to Pepperzack Middle School. A petition was started before the school year started about concerns that parents had with students walking to the new middle school. Now they say barely anything has been done to find solutions. There has been a crossing guard on 57th and Crestline, which parents say is a small win. The route that their 12 year olds take sees a lot of traffic both in the mornings and in the afternoon. But for two moms, they wanted their students on a bus that goes through their neighborhood. As it stands, they say it's a matter of time before a car hits a student. The dangers of him crossing Crestline, not only Crestline, but then crossing 57th. Like the speed zones there are, are way less than how much people drive. This isn't an if, this is a when. Spokane Public Schools did say in a statement, part, uh, quote, their request may be accommodated on a case by case basis once our transportation department determines whether there will be a capacity on buses with existing stops near their homes. To read the full statement, you can click on this story on our website at kxoy.com. Well, this week, Linwood Elementary became the first Spokane school to be solar powered. Spokane Public Schools was awarded a state grant giving 50% of the cost to bring solar power to schools. It's one of our largest elementary schools as well, and so it'll benefit even more kids and more families. So we thought that was great. The panels will provide enough energy to power the equivalent of seven households each year. The Spokane Fire Department hosted its fifth annual uh, Junior Fire Academy that's actually hosting tomorrow. Kids can participate in hands-on activities and learn more about what it is like to be a firefighter for a day. The Fire Department Community Risk Reduction Manager shares why they continue to do this program for the kids in this community every year. Because it gives us a chance to connect with our community outside of an emergency, and it also gives us a chance to share some safety messages with families. The curriculum is all tailored around developmental needs and safety needs of young children in the home. And then our other motive, too, is it's never too early to start thinking about a career in the fire service, and we love the opportunity to connect with our community and let kids feel what it's like to be a firefighter, even if it's just for a little bit. And if you want to attend the academy, it will be held at River Park Square. It'll be from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. The event is free and all families are welcome. Still ahead here tonight, the Alex, Alex Murdoch, the man accused of murdering his wife and son, now wants a new trial. Why he claims jury tampering may have impacted his sentence. And the story causing national outrage, a woman killed by a Seattle police officer speeding. The horrific comments he made after her death caught on camera. We'll be right back. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. 
At 4 News Now, we believe you should expect more from local news. Our team is committed to a community conversation and bringing you information you need when and where you need it. Numerica believes in and supports that mission. There are many different ways that Numerica gives back. Financial education is my way of giving back to the community by being able to help members in branch and getting the opportunity to go out into schools and teach kids about how to put themselves in a better position financially. For over 65 years, McVeigh Brothers has been on the cutting edge of the newest technologically advanced products sold. We're now offering triple pane windows, custom colored windows of your choice, and amazing mini blinds between the glass that will last a lifetime. The doctor will see you now. But do they really? Do they see that crick in your neck? That ache in your heart? Will they see that funny little thing that wasn't there last year? The new bounce in your step? The way your retinal scan connects to your blood sugar? At Kaiser Permanente, all of us work together to care for all that is you. Hello, I'm William Shatner, and you may not know this about me, but years ago, I was diagnosed with a sleep disorder. And like millions of others, I was prescribed sleep equipment. Did you know sleep equipment manufacturers recommend daily cleaning? That's why I use So Clean 2. It's the perfect complement to my daily routine, and it's hassle-free. So Clean 2 is fast and easy. It keeps my sleep equipment fresh every day without the need for disassembly. To keep the immune system strong, we should do everything we can to ensure a good night's sleep, including using the SoClean 2 daily to keep sleep equipment fresh. Try SoClean 2 risk-free for 30 nights. Order now and get $50 off. SoClean 2 is so fast and gives you peace of mind that your sleep equipment is fresh each time you use it. Call the number on your screen or go to SoClean2.com to take advantage of this risk-free trial and get $50 off. Call now. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. 4 News Now is brought to you by Valley Fest. Alex Murdoch is attempting to get a new trial. The disgraced former attorney found guilty of murdering his wife and son, claiming that there was jury tampering. ABC's Jacqueline Lee reporting it was the prosecution's turn to respond. This morning, a potential blow to Alec Murdoch's bid for a new murder trial. The South Carolina Attorney General filing a response Friday, calling Murdoch's motion for a new trial procedurally defective, asking the judge to give Murdoch's attorneys 10 days to refile with evidence to support the defense's claims that the jury was tampered with by court clerk Becky Hill. What they're basically saying is we need to investigate. We need to figure out if the allegations are true. Murdoch's attorneys say he'll advise jurors not to believe Murdoch's testimony and also pressured the jury to reach a quick guilty verdict. All they say to secure for herself a book deal and media appearances that would not happen in the event of a mistrial. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Hill went on to publish a book called Behind the Doors of Justice, The Murdoch Murders. We had gotten, you know, some indication from folks in the courtroom that there was something untoward that had happened in the jury room. The Attorney General also raising questions about some of the allegations made by Murdoch's team, saying there are significant factual disputes. Attorney Eric Bland, who represents four of the jurors, telling ABC News his clients spoke with investigators on Thursday. I think they made a decision to vote Alex guilty based on their own intelligence and their own feelings. Murdoch appearing in court Thursday for separate financial fraud charges. The disgraced attorney who was convicted in March already serving consecutive life sentences for the murders of his wife Maggie and son Paul. I would never intentionally do anything to hurt either one of them. Murdoch taking the stand in his own defense in an explosive trial that lasted 28 days with over 75 witnesses. The state describing in chilling detail how they say Murdoch killed his wife and son. She got mowed down by the only person that we have conclusive proof was at that scene just minutes before. 
The Attorney General says the Murdoch team must show that this evidence in question was discovered after the trial took place, with the evidence strong enough to change the results if a new trial was granted. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, Los Angeles. Former President Donald Trump is sharing more on what he wants to do if he wins a second term. Speaking to a group of religious conservatives on Friday, Trump said he would, add, he would appoint a task force to review cases of alleged political persecution. Take a listen. Tonight I'm announcing that the moment I win the election, I will appoint a special task force to rapidly review the cases of every political prisoner who's been unjustly persecuted by the Biden administration so that I can study the situation very quickly and sign their pardons or commutations on day one. I want to sign them on day one. I want to see what's going on. It's a horrible thing that's happening. 22 years, 18 years, 10 years. It's a terrible thing. And those comments come as Trump faces a total of 91 felonies across four criminal cases. He claims they're politically motivated. Around the Northwest here tonight, community members in Seattle want justice for a woman's death mocked by a police officer. Giovanni Kandula was struck and killed by a police officer's car going 74 miles an hour, nearly three times the speed limit while she was crossing the street. Now the Seattle Community Police Commission is speaking out following body camera footage of another officer mocking the value of her life and laughing at her death. I was heartbroken, I was disgusted. What the community wants, what the police commission wants is uh, a culture change at SPD. In the video, Detective Daniel Otterer laughs at the 26-year-old graduate student's death and appears to talk about what might happen if the victim's family sued the department. Here's that video. Uh, I think she went up on the hood, hit the windshield, then when he hit the brakes, flew off the car. But she is dead. <laughs> yeah, just write a check. $11,000. She was 26 anyway. She had limited value. In response to those comments, Governor Jay Inslee said, quote, it's hard to think of more hurtful things to say to magnify the scope of an already terrible tragedy than what is said in that video. The Northeastern University Seattle campus, where Conjula was studying, will award her degree posthumously and present it to her family. Stick around. We'll be right back. Stream 4 News now on your TV for free with the KXLY Plus app. You didn't choose cat allergies. You didn't choose your hairline. Hot flashes, the flu, or that thing when your knee just gives out for no reason. You didn't choose your bad back, or this, or that. You didn't choose depression, melanoma, or lactose intolerance. But with Kaiser Permanente, you can choose your doctor who works with other best-in-class specialists to care for all that is you. Today only. Quality Stoves and Spas Fair Savings Event. Massive once-a-year discounts on everything. Save up to $3,000 off Quality Stoves and Spas large selection of hot tubs and swim spas. Sale ends 5 p.m. at Quality Stoves and Spas Post Falls. 4 News Now is brought to you by Wendell Motors. Dear Exit Strategy, all your pieces are in place. A tranquil lake, a serene sky, an emerald forest, a secret hideout. Thanks for being there just when I need you most. Always Toyota SUVs. Every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan with roadside assistance. Visit your local Toyota dealer to learn more. Reserve yours at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. Hello, my friend. Pat Boone here for Safe Step Walk-In Tub. Listen, for years, one of my greatest pleasures has been relaxing in my walk-in tub. And I'm excited to tell you that Safe Step has actually found a way to take your bathing and showering experience to a whole new level with their new hybrid tub. It's the luxury and convenience of a shower and tub all in one package. The dual shower heads include a handheld shower wand and a large, luxurious rainfall shower head. Now you can finally enjoy the best of both worlds with the therapeutic benefits of a warm, soothing bath that can help increase mobility, relieve pain, boost energy, and improve sleep. Or, if you prefer, 
you can take a safe, refreshing shower all in one amazing product. Call today and receive $1,500 off the purchase of your new Safe Step walk-in tub. Call 1-800-903-9006. My advice to all the fathers out there, they grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. Ford News Now is brought to you by the Coeur d'Alene Convention and Visitors Bureau. A former Colorado police officer has been sentenced for leaving a woman handcuffed in a patrol car that was parked on railroad tracks. A train ended up crashing into the car, seriously injuring that woman. Aaron Reinke has the story. Jordan Steinke never imagined her career in law enforcement ending this way, telling the judge she was sorry for the decision she made a year ago that took away her badge. As a police officer, I never intended for another human to come to harm under my watch. I feel very much responsible for what happened to you that night. Steinke spoke directly to Yarini Rios before a judge issued a sentence. She put Rios in a patrol car on the tracks before a train hit it. The former Fort Lupton officer was convicted of two misdemeanors. I understand, recognize, and empathize that Ms. Rios Gonzalez and her family have endured a great deal of physical, emotional, and psychological pain. Rio survived with numerous broken bones. She has communicated multiple times that she feels very sorry for Ms. Steinke. Rios's attorney told the judge she didn't feel strongly about jail time. It's a punishment the judge thought about and then seemed to change his mind. Ms. Rios Gonzalez has shown that compassion and grace should win out. Steinke will now serve 30 months of probation and she's required to get a mental health evaluation. Since that day, Steinke says she's battled with PTSD. What happened that night has haunted me for 364 days. <laughs> I remember your cries and your screams. A traumatic ending to her career has her promising to stop this from ever happening again. I will educate not only current and future police officers, but any and all who will listen. A toddler in Arkansas has died from a rare brain-eating amoeba. It happened after they spent the day at a splash pad where health officials believed the infection was contracted. The amoeba is called Naglaria fowleri. It's known to destroy brain tissue and cause brain swelling. And while it lives in soil and warm, fresh water, the amoeba can infect people in recreational pools and splash pads that are not sanitized with enough chlorine. However, infections are rare. According to the CDC, roughly three Americans are infected each year, but the outcome is usually fatal. We're heading toward respiratory virus season where illnesses like COVID, flu, the flu, and RSV and the common cold, they tend to start spreading in October. COVID cases are already on the rise in some parts of the country. There have been nearly 19,000 COVID-related hospitalizations in the past week. RSV cases are also on the rise in the south and small increases in the West and Midwest. The symptoms for both of these diseases are extremely similar. Cough, and congestion, runny nose, those are common symptoms to all four of those uh, viruses. Say so there are ways to help distinguish between the illnesses. First, look at how quickly those symptoms start. RSV and COVID are more gradual, in, usually in symptom onset, and may start with a runny nose and then progress to other symptoms. RSV symptoms may also include fever, sneezing, coughing, and wheezing, while COVID symptoms include shortness of breath, ab abdominal pain, and fatigue. Here's what we have coming up on this special edition of 4 News Now. A museum smashed in Seattle. Why police are calling the act a hate crime. Plus a preview of what you can expect when the leaves start to change colors in this week's Air 4 Adventure. And I think with the upcoming weather, all the leaves on the trees will start be, to be getting those signals that maybe it's time to start changing. We have a big change to much cooler weather on the way. But before that, fire danger coming up for tomorrow that we have to get uh, covered coming up here in just a few minutes. Download the 4 News Now app today. Beat the heat, always water before 10 a.m. or after 6 p.m. I like the old.
As we naturally age, many people are getting zero amount of this incredible and unique substance. That's when we start seeing an impact in our joints, skin, nails, and even our digestion. People ask me, Dr. X, what is the number one supplement I should be taking? My answer is multi-collagen protein. People's reactions to me, people were like, what are you doing? What is going on? You look amazing. You have a glow about you. What makes Ancient Nutrition Multi-Collagen stand out from other brands? 10 types of collagen. It's grass-fed, pasture-raised with vitamin C and probiotics. It's proven to reduce exercise-induced joint discomfort as early as day one and reduce joint discomfort rapidly, continuously, and persistently. It improves the appearance of crow's feet after four weeks and improves skin tone after eight weeks. And it promotes hair thickness, growth, and a reduction in hair breakage. It has transformed everything from my hair. Like, my hair was starting to kind of just, you know, come out. <laughs> and I don't have that anymore. My skin feels amazing. Call the number on your screen and find out how to get a free bottle when you order, plus free shipping and our 30-day money-back guarantee. And as a bonus, we will include Dr. Josh Axe and Jordan Rubin's revolutionary book, Multi-Collagen Makeover, free with your order, plus free shipping and free returns. I have implicit trust in Dr. Axe because the plan worked. I'm living proof of it. This is the collagen protein that is backed by clinical studies. It's what my family uses, it's what I use, and I know you're gonna benefit in a big way as well. Love the results or get your money back. This special TV offer is not available in stores. Call the number on your screen or go online now. My advice to all the fathers out there, they grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. From downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now, Special Edition. Welcome back to the special edition of 4 News Now. A man with a sledgehammer allegedly shattered the windows of a Seattle museum, an act that police are calling a hate crime. Erica Zuko has more. Someone may have broken windows in historic part of the Chinatown International District. But the director of the Wing Luke Museum says that action couldn't shatter the sense of pride and dignity so many feel in this space. In our historic Canton Alley, which is literally the, the cultural heart of, uh, of, at the very least, the Chinese American community here, if not the entire neighborhood. So we think of it. It did upset and concern many. As they learned about what police are calling a hate crime. Court documents say a suspect broke windows with a sledgehammer and accused Chinese people of ruining his life. I am concerned about escalation into violence towards actual people. In court today, a judge ordered $30,000 bail, and the prosecuting attorney's office is expected to release information on potential charges Monday. Back here at Wing Luke, Joel Barakial Tan says their mission is to tell stories. And he believes there's a message in this. Come eat here, come be here, come walk around. It, it, safety is not the absence of any kind of danger, but it is the presence of our connectedness. We can create safety by being together more often and with more of us. We'll turn now to your weather forecast and something that we have not talked about in a while, but we must talk about for tomorrow as everybody has to get back into fire season mode tomorrow. A 4 News Now weather alert day as we see gusty winds move in. It has been a very summer like weekend. And so a fire weather warning now in effect here from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m on Sunday for the Spokane area, as well as the Washington side of the Palouse, and then all the way across to the Cascades, that combination of hot, dry, windy weather, something we have not seen here in a little while, thanks to some cooler temperatures. Unfortunately, and fortunately, we have to deal with this, and hopefully this will be the last time for this season. The other factor is the humidity, which is gonna drop very quickly as we go through tomorrow afternoon. And so it is going to be one of those very summer-like fire weather days where everybody has to just pay a little bit extra attention. And if you see smoke, call it in because any 
wildfires could spread very quickly in these conditions. Here's what we're talking about as far as the winds go. It should, will be very, fairly gusty for the majority of the daylight hours. Starting a couple hours before lunchtime, wind gusts could be as high as 30 miles an hour around Spokane and around Coeur d'Alene. Thankfully, this is just one day where we have to deal with these kinds of conditions because much cooler fall-like weather is just around the corner. I'll show you how that plays out coming up in your forecast. Yeah, certainly. Hopefully the last warning we have to issue this year, Matt. Thanks for that. Well, in just a few weeks, the inland northwest will be filled with beautiful fall colors. Tonight, we're heading to the east to give you a preview of what you can expect when those leaves begin to change. Let's go for a ride on the Air 4 drone over Coeur d'Alene. <laughs> artist specifically, color is what motivates me. Color is what brings me life and joy. Watching all of the colors change, especially around Coeur d'Alene and around the lake, um, is just amazing. And here you get like the bright orange and yellows and then you'll see that reflected in the lake. So we just have so many amazing scenes around here that get you excited for fall. My favorite spot is the Centennial Trail leading out to Higgins Point around the lake. You get those big leafy trees and right now they're bright yellow and bright orange. I am a painter and my paintings are all about celebrating the Pacific Northwest. So I love the Pacific Northwest, born and raised. It brings me so much joy to be able to try to capture some of that on canvas. So I paint a lot of local scenes. As an artist, I'm just very inspired by color and I'm inspired by the beauty around us, the mountains, the trees, the rivers and lakes. So that's what most of my paintings focus on. My students here at the Croc Center, I always ask them, what's your favorite thing about fall? And all of them said the changing of the leaves and jumping in the leaves and yeah, it's kind of bringing joy to everybody. It's so beautiful. Yeah, I love Coeur d'Alene. I love the whole Pacific Northwest. We're so blessed here. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. The fresh timer starts the minute a tomato gets picked. That's why at Fred Meyer, we shorten the time from harvest to home. So no matter how you shop, you'll have more time to enjoy your fresh produce. Fred Meyer, fresh for everyone. Driving safely is all about the little things, like giving folks a break, even at unmarked crosswalks, making plenty of space for people riding, and choosing to wait for the next green light by slowing down and stopping on yellow. Because when you're the biggest and the fastest, you've got to be the safest, too. Together, we get there. Get ready for fall with Pape Machinery. Right now, we're offering big discounts on remaining 2022 John Deere Compact Utility Tractors. Get a 1025R tractor loader backhoe for as low as $299 per month with 0% financing for 84 months. These offers are only good now through October, so stop by your local Pape Machinery Egg and Turf store to take advantage today. Pepe keeps you moving. Dear 2030, we look forward to seeing you. After our 160-point quality assurance inspection, we'll be Toyota certified used vehicles with 7-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranties. Not to honk our own horns, but the best new cars make the best used cars. Yours, Toyota. Get 5.49% APR for up to 60 months on your favorite Toyota certified used models. Find yours at toyotacertified.com. Toyota, let's go places. I'm going to meet the woman of my dreams very shortly. Yay! It's never too late. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. What the world needs now. I'm ready to find love now. The sweet love. I don't want to be alone anymore. I want to be in love again. Wow. Let the journey begin. Oh, not just for some, but for everyone. At Fred Meyer, everyone wins when it comes to savings because you get the same great prices, deals, and rewards on pickup or delivery as you do in store. So no matter how you shop, everyone saves big. Fred Meyer, fresh for everyone. 4 News Now is brought to you by Pape Machinery.
I really, really was hoping with how nice the weather had been over the past few weeks that we would not have to talk about fire weather again. Unfortunately, here we are. So let's all be careful tomorrow. And let's get through this because afterwards, if you've been waiting to put on the sweaters and get the pumpkin spice and have the nice fall conditions, I think you're really going to like what's coming up in the extended forecast. But what else we're going to be watching as we head into tomorrow besides the risk for new fast growing wildfires is also there's been and it's happened today and on Friday as well. Lots of wildfire activity from the fires that are still burning across the northwest. In fact, there's been a lot of smoke coming out of the Olympic Peninsula today as the west side also deals with some hot and dry September weather. We've also had a new fire pop up near the Montana state line in Shoshone County that has brought some smoke and has degraded air quality at times around the Cataldo and Kellogg areas. For now, things look okay, but we may see air quality around Shoshone and Kootenai counties drop into the moderate range as we start off in the morning. Not expecting that to get much further to the west because then our winds will begin to shift pretty quickly out of the west and start to blow some of that smoke away. So starting off in the 50s in the morning, low 80s in the afternoon. Got to be a very different looking day as well as our skies will turn mostly cloudy as the day progresses. I'm expecting rain to come along for the ride. Sure would be nice if we got some of that, but instead it's just the wind, which means we'll have that lovely smoke mixed in with clouds. In fact, we've already seen some pretty smoky elevated haze with our sunset tonight around the region. Not expecting rain here for a little while, but there is some in the forecast. It's just not coming with this particular round of cool air. This is the cold front coming in tonight and through tomorrow that will pump up those winds and provide that fire danger, but also some cooler air. And so when the next front comes in on Monday and continues with gusty winds, we'll have cooler temperatures, we'll have higher humidities, and our fire danger is going to be considerably less than what we will see tomorrow afternoon. Now, this is the big one right here, folks. This is the change from summer to fall in a snap instant, because as we get to the end of Monday, look what happens here. Kind of another little lobe of this thing comes down and really takes a big dive to the south, and so we get a lot of cool air that spills into the inland northwest and across the PNW as a whole, and we could be talking about frost in some of those northern valleys by the time we get to Wednesday and Thursday morning. Look at how these temperatures go down. We're talking about only a high of around 65 in Spokane on Wednesday, which means it will likely be even cooler as you head north to the Canadian border. Certainly a big change from our temperatures that we're seeing out there right now. We also will have a decent shot as some of that cooler air comes down. It'll bring along some moisture, and so we have a decent chance for some rain coming in for Wednesday. So keep that in mind as you're making your plans in the week ahead. We'll moderate out as we head into next weekend, but it's going to feel a lot more like fall after tomorrow. Stream 4 News Now on your TV for free with the KXLY Plus app. Hit me with them good vibes, pictures on my phone, life. everything is so fine, Little Start your day with Good Morning Northwest weekdays at 5 a.m. and then America's most watched morning show at 7 a.m. Good morning, America. The Labor Day sale at Furniture Row has been extended. And that means the more you buy, the more you save. I saved a hundred bucks. I saved 200 bucks. Save a hundred bucks on every thousand you spend. On living, dining, bedroom, and mattresses. We saved 300 bucks. Check out doorbusters while they last. Plus four years, no interest. Shop the largest selection at the lowest prices guaranteed. But don't wait. The extended Labor Day sale at Furniture Row ends soon. Your whole health is more than what you find at the doctor's office. Because it's all around you. The food you eat. What makes you happy? And what keeps you up at night? The place you call home. It's why we created a health insurance company that considers so much more. WellPoint. Your whole health is our whole point. Hello, I'm William Shatner. And you may not know this about me, but years ago, I was diagnosed with a sleep disorder. And like millions of others, I was prescribed sleep equipment. 
Did you know sleep equipment manufacturers recommend daily cleaning? That's why I use So Clean 2. It's the perfect complement to my daily routine and it's hassle free. So Clean 2 is fast and easy. It keeps my sleep equipment fresh every day without the need for disassembly. To keep the immune system strong, we should do everything we can to ensure a good night's sleep, including using the SoClean 2 daily to keep sleep equipment fresh. Try SoClean 2 risk-free for 30 nights. Order now and get $100 off. SoClean 2 is so fast and gives you peace of mind that your sleep equipment is fresh each time you use it. Call the number on your screen or go to SoClean2.com to take advantage of this risk-free trial and get $100 off. Call now. 4 News Now is brought to you by r and RV. Well, all week long, the message for Washington State football has been don't let up. Welcome into sports. I'm Julian Minnesome. The Cougars were hoping to avoid a letdown performance after last week's emotional win over Wisconsin. Washington State welcomed Northern Colorado to the Palouse. The Cougars were the overwhelming favorites heading into this game, and they showed why. First quarter, Cameron Ward scrambling, dancing, running to the end zone for the touchdown. Washington State's first. Ward had it going on the ground and in in the air Ward dropped back to pass could make a sandwich with all the time he had in the pocket back there he finds Lincoln Victor over the middle for the touchdown it was all Cougars in the first half now peep this next play by Cameron Ward Ward gonna drop back throwing it up for Josh Kelly and Kelly that's just unfair Kelly with the touchdown and then had some less than friendly words to say to the Northern Colorado players we'll just chalk it up as friendly competition Washington State wins big 64 to 21 is the final score it's the most points the Cougars have scored since 2018 now here's Alex Crescenti with the post game from Pullman this was the exact performance Washington State was looking for as they wrap up non-conference play. A 64-21 domination of Northern Colorado. And today was all about the offense. The Cougs put up more than 700 yards throughout the game. And even with most of the starters being pulled by halftime, they only failed to score on three drives in the game. So naturally, that's going to make for a pretty happy head coach. Just really proud of our starters to come in there and play in a mature way. You know, a focused way, an energetic way, a disciplined way. And we went out there and we executed uh, really, really well in that first half. And we did what I thought good teams do and come in there and set the standard for how you want to play. Offense, defense, special teams, I thought it was really good. And we go by saying um, ATFA, attack that. I had two curse words at the end. I can't <laughs> say it, but uh, it's just that's just what we do, you know, and, and that's the whole thing. And we were beating them pretty bad, and then we just kept tempoing and tempoing. And I was kind of, I was like, damn, like this is really what we do, you know. It's kind of shocked me too. And then even when I was in at the twos, we just tempoed everything, which was a lot of fun. Now the test is about to get a whole lot tougher as the Cougs are set to begin their Pac-12 slate of games. They'll welcome in Oregon State next week, a team they lost to down in Corvallis a year ago. Reporting in Pullman, I'm Alex Crescenti for News Now Sports. Well, thank you, Alex. Now, Idaho taking on Cal today. The Vandals fresh off that win over Nevada last week. They were looking to keep it going. The Vandals punch Cal in the mouth early on. Anthony Woods makes something out of nothing. Vandals go up 10 to nothing in the first quarter. Second quarter now. Idaho with the ball again. Giovanni McCoy takes it in himself. Idaho scored 17 straight points to start the game. But then Cal woke up in the second half. Sam Jackson, the fifth. There was four other ones, but this one might be the fastest. Running wild right here as Idaho can't hang on to the lead. Vandals fall 31-17. Idaho head coach Jason X says it was a tale of two halves. You know, I think they made some adjustments, dropped more guys into coverage, played a little less man as the game went on that made us uh, hold the ball a little bit more. Uh, they were able to get some pressure on Bonnie. Uh, we really never were able to get the run game going, uh, which we needed to. Uh, and then I thought in the second half, they kind of wore us down with their running game and were able to uh, have some big plays. Idaho will look to bounce back next week. The Vandals open up Big Sky play at home against Sacramento State.
Eastern Washington looking for its first win of the season. The Eagles taking on southeastern Louisiana for the first game at Roos Field in Cheney. Eastern with the ball down by four. Keikoa Viceris finds Nolan Ohm in the back of the end zone. Eagles take the lead. Now southeastern Louisiana fights back Bauer Sharp. That's not the name of a law office. That's the southeastern tight end. Eastern Washington finds itself trailing once again after the touchdown, but the red field gives the Eagles their powers. Tuna Altair, big fish gives Eastern the lead for good. Eagles hang on 40 to 29. It's their first win of the season. This is what they worked all offseason for. Um, expected it to happen in Minneapolis, didn't. Um, expected it to happen in Fresno, and late it didn't. Um, and it did today. And so now, now the response is, okay, you responded from two losses. How do you respond after a win? Well, we'll find out next week. Eastern Washington opens up Big Sky play on the road against UC Davis. A lot of football. That'll wrap us up for sports. Download the 4 News Now app today. Start your day with Good Morning Northwest weekdays at 5 a.m. and then America's most watched morning show. Good Morning America. The doctor will see you now. But do they really? Do they see that crick in your neck? That ache in your heart? Will they see that funny little thing that wasn't there last year? The new bounce in your step? The way your retinal scan connects to your blood sugar? At Kaiser Permanente, all of us work together to care for all that is you. Discover fall in Coeur d'Alene. Experience the hidden treasure of autumn in our serene lakeside town. As the lively energy of summer subsides, the town embraces the tranquility of fall. Guests can unwind and find solace by the glistening lake. See for yourself why fall is Coeur d'Alene's best kept secret. Book your fall foliage lake cruise overnight package now and make memories that will warm your heart for years to come. Attention, catheter patients on Medicare. Do you use catheters? Are you tired of using messy lubricants? Depending on your insurance, you could be eligible to receive up to 200 catheters shipped to you every month for free simply by calling Comfort Medical right now. You can use a new catheter every time you catheterize. And Comfort Medical has the latest styles with no need for lubricant from leading manufacturers. It's simple. Comfort Medical will deal directly with Medicare and private insurers so you can focus on the important things in life. Call Comfort Medical right now. If you want the newest products delivered conveniently and discreetly to your door, then it's time to discover Comfort Medical. Call Comfort Medical now. Shipping is free. And you can rely on Comfort Medical to deliver most catheter brands directly to your door. Creating an account and placing your first order with Comfort Medical has never been easier. Visit comfortmedical.com slash TV to get started. Call now for a free comfort kit and a free sample. Call 1-800-718-5824. That's 1-800-718-5824. This is the sound of a generation rising above. The Commemorative Air Force honors the heroes of yesterday while educating and inspiring the heroes of tomorrow. Learn more at commemorativeairforce.org. All right, folks, one more day, fire weather, and also one more day of temperatures in the 80s and it could be the last one for a while so we can say hey be safe out there and also maybe enjoy that final that final uh grasp yeah. of warmth. Certainly, I would be shocked if we saw more temperatures like we saw today in those upper 80s and low 90s. So, uh, see you next year, yeah. I guess. <laughs> it's time to say goodbye to that chapter, you know. Welcome sweater weather. I'm all about that. that that's guys. real football weather. That's right. Sweater weather. Yeah. Get the crew neck, the Idaho crew. <laughs> Matt, heated I, benches, right? <laughs> you gotta benches. have the heated benches. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. Set your fantasy lineup. See breaking news in your area or have a story idea? Contact 4 News Now.